painful. Now, a tattoo is a permanent modification of the body made by inserting ink pigments into the dermis under the epidermis. As Christians, we understand that God created our bodies. He created our bodies from the dust. God, He also rewards us what is done in the body. Jesus came and healed bodies. We also know that the Holy Spirit lives in our body. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we know that God will one day resurrect our body. Now, tattoos have become more popular and accepted than ever before. It's becoming embedded in our society to the point that it's not just a fashion that is going to pass by. It's something that's probably going to stay here. Currently, one in five U.S. adults has at least one tattoo, which is way more than before, about 16 to 14 percent in the year 2003 and the year 2008. Now, the famous scripture that is used against tattoos is Leviticus 19 verse 28. And I'm going to read this verse. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. In the Near East, tattoos were used to mark slaves. If one were to have a brand on his hand or forehead, he or she would become quickly identified as someone's property. And so we must understand is that in light of that, as well as in that culture, people would cut themselves during the time of grieving and expressing sorrow. So when somebody would die, they would cut themselves to show sorrow and grief. In fact, we actually see that in Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 6, it says, both great and small shall die in the land. They shall not be buried, neither shall men lament for them. And then it says this thing, cut themselves nor make themselves bald for them. So it was a common practice in that day, in that culture where somebody would die, you know, like we would, you know, wear black and go to the funeral and we would cry and then afterwards, you know, we would just have a meal with the family, but people would cut themselves. And God was saying, hey, I don't want you to go into this new land and I don't want you to be cutting yourself, cutting your flesh for the dead. I don't want you to practice these rituals. In fact, He says, I don't want you to have any tattoo marks on you. I am the Lord. Now, God was not necessarily against Israel ever making in, in incisions or cuts into their body because one of the signs of the covenant that Israel had was that the males were circumcised. That's cutting of the skin, okay? So this was not that God was saying, oh, your body is the temple, I don't want you to cut it because God was asking them to make a covenant with Him by cutting their foreskin of little baby boys. And so this was not that. There was a deeper application, an implication of what these tattoos meant in that day. For example, in Egypt, we know that mainly women were the ones that were inked. And a lot of um, some research and evidence actually suggests that tattooing body parts of women associated with fertility. And it was believed as a good luck charm for protection during the birthing process. Now in Canaan, we see of course that famous verse in uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, 28 when the priests were trying to invoke their God and they would cut themselves so that He will bring fire, you know, during that contest between Elijah and the priests of Baal where Ahab and Jezebel, you know, sponsored that little religion and so they would cut themselves they would like literally slash their bodies so Canaan had a lot more brutal way of marking their bodies more than just inking it they were actually went as far as branding slashing and gashing skin and so Israel going into the promised land God was saying hey I don't want you to live like them I don't want you to cut yourself like that I don't want you to embrace their lifestyle and, and in Leviticus I read the verse God was saying I am the Lord he's like hey I am your God you're not going to live like that. I don't want you to live like that. But again, that did not mean that God did not allow Israel to wear earrings. In fact, it was the opposite. Uh, women having earrings was a sign of God's blessing. And sometimes God would pronounce a curse on the nation and said He will even take their gold and their earrings. Or men would get circumcised. So there was cutting. But this kind of cutting of inking the body and um, tattooing yourself and cutting yourself for the dead, God was like, that's the practice of the pagan culture and I don't want you to embrace that. In fact, Paul gives us a general rule of the thumb in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 23. He says, all things are lawful to me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful to me, but not all things edify. That means that there are things that might not be wrong. Again, I'm not saying that tattoos are wrong or not yet. I'm just saying things that might not be wrong, but they're just not wise. They're not beneficial to me. They don't glorify God. They have no point. The part that I want you to keep in front of your mind is that 
demons can enter through tattoos. You have to understand that tattoos involves piercing the skin. It's pretty much cutting the skin. It's opening the skin. And there has been a lot of pagan spiritual associations with skin piercing. And a lot of them can give an opening to demonic curses. Tattoos are associated with heathen cultures and were reintroduced to the West in 1700s by sailors who visited different islands. And so there are cultures and religions today that uses inking their body as very closely connected with pagan, occultic and witchcraft practices and you have to be aware of that. We've done deliverances and people who demons claim that they enter through tattoos especially tattoos of people you know painting or um, inking their body with a dragon with a snake or some kind of a you know nude women or nude men or things that are just very obvious they draw attention and they they point to darkness and they point to sin do i believe that every person has a tattoo has a demon no but tattoos can be an opening door an open door to demons